So I've got some Heath Zenith outdoor garage lights and I'm going to be taking this off today to show how to modify this light so you don't have to go through replacing them every few years. Uh, I'm going to bypass the electronic circuits in there for the motion sensor and the light sensor and put a smart bulb in there instead. These fixtures are garbage. After a few short years, the internal electronics uh, get corroded because it's not properly weather sealed inside. And it's really annoying to replace the whole fixture. So by just putting a regular bulb in there, which is either a smart bulb, which would be like Wi-Fi controlled, or you can get a bulbs with built-in light sensors, then it's a lot easier if the bulb goes just to replace the bulb as to replacing the whole fixture. So I'm going to show you how to modify the fixture today to bypass the electronics in there and just get the 120 volt right to the light socket so you don't have to buy a whole new fixture. Obviously when you remove the fixture you want to find the circuit breaker and cut the power. Also um, what I did is there's three screws up here that hold this down. When I remove the fixture, I remove the glass piece first. I just find it easier when you're working on the step ladder uh, to get the glass out of the way in case you drop something. So, and this is the heavy part. So just get that out of there. And then remove the fixture with the two back screws, which are there. But here's the key part. I mean, you can see this is a replacement fixture. I already had a break, and then I went out and I bought another one. And, of course, that was a silly move to do, considering the first one didn't last very long. So I tried sealing this plastic piece with some silicone, hoping that would give it some extra weather sealing. It didn't help. It still broke. And I believe it's the switches, and I had even put silicone over the switch covers here so that... Um, I mean, you could still move the switch within the silicon, but I was hoping that would help weather seal it more. It didn't. It's all corroded. So I'm going to show today how to take this apart. It's going to be a little hard in the camera, but it's going to require removing these two rivets first. There's two rivets here that are holding this plastic shield on. So once we get that plastic shield off, it's pretty straightforward what we have to do. All right, so to get those two rivets down, I tried using an electric drill. It doesn't help because it spins. So I just took a pair of needle nose pliers and I started prying the ends off. Now the other one didn't have the silicon on it, so it made it a little bit easier. This one's got the silicon, which is going to interfere with this a little bit. But what you want to do is just work this rivet out Get some of that silicone off of there. And here. So I've got the silicone, I mean the metal piece out. It might still be a little bit on there, but I think we can pull that plastic off. So we'll go for the other one. There's only two that you have to do. Okay, so we got the washer off, and I believe this will pry it out now. So there's a couple of spacers here in the plastic, and you can pop that out. And okay, so we've got that out. Don't worry about breaking any of this. We're not putting it back in. We're going to turn this into a very simple light bulb fixture with just two wires. So now the board is not held in with anything, this circuit board. So you just have to work that out with a screwdriver like this. And again, don't worry about this. We're not going to use this. We're going to completely discard it. So you got some wires in here. So just get some cutters and start cutting the wires loose. Now 
make the wires as long as possible so that the two key wires we want are the black and the white so we don't have to extend them. Okay, so now we've got the board out. And this is going to just be tossed in the garbage. And now we've got a bunch of wires here. So if you look inside the actual light fixture, these are the two wires we're going for, the black and the white. So you just tug on them and you look to see which wires they are back here. Now be careful this ground wire. We want to keep this wire. There's a cable tie in here. I would recommend cutting that cable tie loose. That'll separate the wires more so you can see what's going on. So here this just came out so we don't need that. We know it's not the red wire and actually the red wire just came completely out. And so I have a white wire here. This has got to be the white since it's the only one, but I'm going to confirm. I'm going to pull it. And as you can see, if I pull it from the other end, this is the, the correct wire going to the light bulb. So we've got one wire. Now we've got the black. The black is not this one. This must be going to some more of the motion sensor or light sensor components on the top here. The sensor is in here in this dome. So the other black wire, I believe, is this one. And if we pull, yes, it is. So it's this wire here coming out of this plastic chamber where the ground wire is coming out of. There's a grayish wire. Just leave that in there. We don't need it. And actually, it might be related to this gray wire. Maybe we can pull it out. And if we can't, I can't get it all the way out. So all I'm going to do is cut it so it doesn't interfere with anything. I'm going to cut this cable tie out so it also is out of the way. Sorry that the camera, I know, is not picking all this all up. It's hard with working on it. So now it's simple. We've got a black wire and a white wire that we can hook back up to the house. So you just want to strip these. These are stranded wires. So rule of thumb, when you have a stranded wire going to a solid copper wire, you make sure the stranded wire is longer than the copper wire by you know, maybe a 3 eighths of an inch. And when you put that against the copper wire, you make sure the stranded wire sticks above it. So when you put the wire nut on, it grabs the stranded wire first, and that'll give you a good solid uh, connect when you put them back on because it's a little tricky when you're doing stranded to copper. So make sure the wire is just a little bit longer. That's, that's a good trick when you join these back together. So then once we have this all hooked back up, it's up to you. You can put a, a Wi-Fi smart bulb in there if you have a smart automation type home or just an app on the phone. And if you're not into that kind of technology, just get a bulb um, that has built-in light sensing. And I'll come back with an Amazon link in the video and we'll show some options there. All right, so if you want to also verify before you put your fixture back on, I have a spare little power cord that I use here and I put two wire nuts on it, plugged it into an outlet, and I put a regular bulb in there and it lights up. So if you're a little worried, if you got the right black wire, you can do this temporarily just to make sure everything is uh, is good before you go hang it back up. Also a little tip, uh, you can clean that glass dome. Mine was filthy. It's amazing how much dirt gets on the inside of the glass. So it's a good time while it's loose, you can really clean it up. Amazon I typed in light sensing outdoor bulb. You could probably also type in dusk to dawn light bulbs. And these bulbs don't require any sort of a hub. The internals are completely set. The bulb will turn on when it gets dark and it'll turn off when it gets light out by itself. They have a built-in sensor. You can see the sensor in a couple of photos here. That little red dot. That's what's detecting if it's day or night. So you could just screw this into your fixture and the bulb will do the rest of the work for you. 
And the only thing I would say uh, is maybe look for something that's 5000K. That's the kind of lighting that it puts off. This is more of a, a white light as opposed to a yellowish light. Other bulbs are in the 23 to 2700K. They're more, I think, meant for indoor. But for outdoor, I, I like the 5000K. It just it looks better. Um, you don't have to worry about them being dimmable anymore because the fixture did require a dimmable LED, but now that we've removed all of the electronics from the fixture, it's just a standard light socket, so you don't need a dimmable LED. So you can look at the, the various models here and brands, depending on if you're specific, that you want a GE brand or a, a generic brand like Amazon. Um, these are a really simple solution to automating those garage door fixtures, garage light fixtures. Now, if you have a smart hub at home, it could be something like a smart things, which is from Samsung, or my hub is called a Hubitat. You can get a, um, what they call a Zigbee smart bulb. Zigbee is a technology that uses a 2.4 wireless network. It is not the same as Wi-Fi. It's on its own network. But that's what these smart hubs are all about. You can get something like this, and then you can build a an app within your your hub to turn the lights on and off. And in my case, I built an app that said, at sunrise, turn the bulb off. At sunset, turn the bulb on. And these bulbs are then controllable from that hub. You can even... If you have Alexa or Google, you could say, hey, turn the bulb on or, or turn the bulb off. Uh, these bulbs cost a little bit more than the, the bulbs with the light sensors built in. On average, they're in the $10 range. And again, though, I recommend the, the daylight version, which is around 5000 k And you don't need the multicolor stuff. That doesn't really help out for a garage door light. So you can look at something like this. And as long as you've got some sort of a smart hub, these, uh, these work really well. The only thing you want to make sure is that you have a signal outside your garage door to control these. Sometimes when you are outside the house, it's by the garage, since the garage door is metal. Uh, sometimes the signal out there can be a little iffy. I have to put a Zigbee out with in that area inside the garage to help extend the signal outside. Zigbee is a mesh network. So by putting outlets throughout the home, it, it helps the whole network be more solid. This is what the program would look like if you had a Hubitat to automatically turn the lights on and off. So this rule here is called garage lights on and the trigger is set to when it's is sunset. In this case right now it's 814. Now this Habitat knows what sunrise and sunset is because that's going to change on a regular basis. So the Habitat is smart. So it knows in the winter time that sunset is going to be probably 530. And so you just set a trigger for sunset or sunrise if you're turning the bulbs on or off. And then you set an action. And in this case I have two actions. I turn the, the the right light on and the left light on. And that's as simple as it can be to control your lights. You can also set up an offset. So maybe you want sunset plus 15 minutes. Maybe you really want to have the lights come on around 830. Because when it's sunset, it's still light outside. So right now I haven't done that, but I might add 10 or 15 minutes to this, to this trigger. And that's very easy in this program to do something like that. And then I have the same app to turn them off. Where it says when this time is sunrise, which right now is around 6.20 in the morning, it'll turn them off. And the same thing. You might want to put an offset in there and say, well, at sunrise it's already light out. Maybe I want to take 15 minutes off of that. So you could say sunrise minus 15 to more accurately turn the lights off.